In this video, we'll be going over a tier list of the best tanks in patch 9.2 of WoW for both M Plus and Raid. Before we begin, I'd just like to say that most of my uh, viewers don't uh, aren't subscribed to the uh, to my channel. We just hit 100 subscribers, so um, if you're not subscribed, please consider, consider subscribing and uh, liking the video. Uh, it really helps and really shows some support. Alright, so we're going to do Raid first. And before we begin, I just want to say that um, tanks are in really good balancing spots right now. For 99% of the player base, um, all of these tanks are in S tier. You can do any content that you'd want on any of these tanks. You know, you can time your 25, 27 keys. You can get CE on any of these tanks. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to rank them comparatively to each other in like a vacuum about what's best and um, what they bring to each other. Um, this isn't going to be at like your CE or like your your 35 keystone level. You know, this is going to be like towards the higher end of, uh, of uh, player ability but not like um, the cutting edge or like the bleeding edge of like world first raiders or like um, method sheets or, or those high end teams there. Anyways, uh, we're going to do Blood Death Knight first. So Blood Death Knight, um, the Death Knight tank spec. Um, for raid, uh, the tier set isn't the most useful and that's gonna be kind of similar with all of them. A lot of the, the tank tier sets are like marginally useful in, in raid and like super broken in AOE, which is an interesting design choice. Um, the blood tier set gives you um, a stacking 1% strength whenever you heart strike, as well as um, increasing the duration of dance and rune weapon for two set. And then the four set is whenever you take damage, uh, you have a chance equal to your parry chance to heart strike. And you also summon two rune, rune weapons whenever you uh, use your dancing rune weapon. Uh, and that does proc the two set. So it um, it's good, you know, it's fine. Um, a lot of the tanks are just kind of fine. Blood, uh, blood is very survivable, but its damage is, is on the lower end. Um, Devil, tier, Devil Legendaries doesn't super help this, unless I guess you're Kyrian, but I believe Necro would just be better. Um, overall, the Covenant would be better, and it has a more uh, variable damage profile. Uh, you're going to either run Dancing room, uh, Crimson Room Weapon or Super Strain, depending on the boss fight, and that can bring some damage. Um, the big thing Blood Death Knight has going for it is uh, basically unnerfed AMZ. So if you don't know, um, Blizzard... Uh, after the Death Knight fiasco of 9.0, uh, nerfed AMZ to have it scale off of health, um, which means that for Unholy and Frost, uh, it's basically bad. But for a good old pile of blood, uh, it's essentially the same, which is really good. AMZ is busted. So because of that, we're going to give it A, um, decent survivability, really good survivability, all right damage, really good utility in the form of like Grips, Score Fiend, and uh, AMZ. So next up, we have uh, Brewmaster. Brewmaster is looking to be pretty decent. Um, in raid, it'll be uh, obviously okay because again, you know, a lot of these tier sets are, are geared more towards uh, kind of AOE counters, and there will be some. What their tier set does is that um, the two piece gives you um, breath of fire damage reduction um, if it hits it. It's four percent additional less damage that uh, you take from them. And the four piece is where the where the big show is. Okay, so smash deals fifty percent more damage, heals your sixty six percent of damage dealt, and grants sixty six percent of damage dealt as maximum health is ten seconds. Um, in single target, this won't really be, you know, as useful as it could be. Um, this really gets crazy when you hit multiple targets. But the damage is really good. Brew is super good in progression scenarios because of stagger. It helps really smooth out your damage intake, um, to help a lot with healers. Has some utility with, like, ring and clash and statue. Um, unsure if that'll be super useful. If it will be, it'll be on, like, earlier fights, like the first boss fight, which generally, you know, um, isn't too difficult of a hurdle. So um, it, the utility of that weighs a little less. Um, and then Mistweaver and Windwalker are losing some of their stonks uh, with Windwalker nerfs and the tier set being super bugged still because that class is always bugged. And then Mistweaver nerfs. Um, they'll still have good throughfoot, but Druid and Holy Priest and um, obviously Paladin is still great. Shaman is still great. Um, they all kind of fight for the four healer spots you have. So bringing Monk uh, with Mystic Touch might have some benefit. Uh, they do great single target damage um, and they, they scale well in the AoE with Keg. Uh, you're going to be playing Kyrian because of just a synergy and then double, double Ox is crazy. And because of all these reasons, uh, they also get an A tier. Um, a lot of tanks are kind of just up in this A area. The tank balance is really good. All right, so next we're going to be doing uh, Vengeance, the Demon Hunter tank spec. Now, I play Havoc, so I'm a little bit uh, biased here. Uh, Demon Hunter represent. Uh, the tier set, again, doesn't do a lot in Raid, which is kind of a similar thing with a lot of uh, tank specs, as I've been saying. So the two-piece, um, every time you deal damage with Immolation Ori, 10% chance to... Generate a soul shard, and then the four piece is whenever you consume a soul shard, you use the cooldown of either Immo or Feldev by one second. So this can lead to kind of high uptime of Feldev or Immo Aura. 
Um, their damage is all right. You can play uh, Dark Glare Boon, which can sometimes reset your Feldev cooldown and give you that proc back, so that's more damage. They can play Venthyr with Agonizing Gaze um, and either CEA, uh, Collective Anguish, which summons um, a Demon Hunter that does I-Beam, or with uh, DG Dark Glare Boon, do a lot of single target damage, so that's good. But other than that, uh, Venthyr doesn't really bring a lot to a raid. Um, I, Havoc's looking really good in raid specifically. So Brand, um, Chaos Brand, coming from them will probably be the most likely case. And other than that, Havoc doesn't bring, really bring too much utility that you can't find elsewhere. Um, chain, Sizzle Chains can be situationally useful, but uh, I believe that you'll find Death Knights of, of some variety or other in the raid with Grip because it's so good, maybe even Blood because of AMZ for Gore Fiends. So I think that while uh, Vengeance is good, comparatively to like some of the other tank specs, it's like C or B tier, um, I don't think it's C tier. I don't think any of the tanks are really like terrible. You can't bring them. Um, so I think it's probably like a low B tier, high C tier. And I can't really put it between it. So I'm going to put it in B, just kind of air on the side of, of being a little bit better. But I think Vengeance is definitely one of the, one of the lower end of, of tanks for the raid. And I'll, I'll, actually, again, all the tanks are good. Tank balance is really good right now. But uh, it's like lower end B, higher end C. All right, so next up we have Bear Druid. Uh, I will say that because of the existence of Balanced Druid, like two of the covenants for this <laughs> for this spec have kind of been neutered and killed, uh, Kieran and Venthyr. Venthyr gained some with the um, buff to that run out recently to the tier set, but we'll get over that in uh, the M plus section. Um, for Raid, uh, the tier set, again, you know, not the most useful. It's a little bit interesting. So the Guardian tier set, the two-piece, uh, causes Bark Skin, Whenever you cast it, it give you Berserk for 4 seconds, which is your main cooldown. And this does work with uh, Guardian, uh, or Incarn, sorry. And then the 4 piece is while you're in Berserk or Incarn, you radiate 45% of attack power cosmic damage, and you heal 61% of attack power um, to yourself every second. So it's more of an AoE-oriented uh, one. It's like a lower end of single target. Um, now this was changed to recently to be hasted, work with um, like all of the damage abilities as well as Venthyr, which is a big bonus to Venthyr, more so in AoE than in Raid, uh, in a more single target setting. Um, they're super unkillable. They have the ability to be kind of one of the highest single target damaging uh, tanks with uh, Night Fae double DPS legendaries and Cat Weaving. Um, the issue with that is that that is only while they're off tanking and uh, most tank fights will not have like an off tanking kind of scenario so while they can do high damage it won't be all the time it won't be 100 percent it'll only be while they're off tanking and a lot of the boss fights i think almost all of them uh don't quote me on that i haven't looked too much in the last three as of yet but they have some form of tank swap so that is um you know in like a, an ideal vacuum they do a, a shit ton of damage but otherwise you know they're just unkillable just they kind of sit there soak up damage um they have no rage utility otherwise Besides Roar, which isn't that great because you have Shamans with Windrush, you have Boomies with with another Roar. But uh, overall, it's a good pick. Um, hard to kill. Uh, all right damage. So they're going to go in like the lower end of, of A tier. All right, next up is the two Prot specs. We're going to do Prot Warrior first. The Prot Warrior, uh, it brings good utility with um, the Raid Shout that gives you health. Um, that's always a good uh, a thing to have. You can never have too many of those. Um, the attack power buff will probably be better brought by Fury because Fury has really good damage, but it's still a consideration if you need it. Um, with their tier set, which um, I will read right now. So the tier set, the two piece does, um, whenever you consume 30 rage, you get a stack of Seething Red. And whenever you have eight of those stacks, you get Outburst, which makes your next Shield Slam or Thunderclap be 200% more effective and give you Ignore Pain. Now, being 200% more effective this, leads to not only a damage increase but also rage generation and extra effects so thunderclap will have an extra will have a um 45 percent slow instead of 15 and you'll get um 45 rage from shield slam instead of the normal 15 which is about half your rage bar which is a lot more rage and then the four piece um whenever you use avatar you get an extra 10 percent damage take 10 percent less damage and you instantly get a stack of outburst so you get one empowered shield slam and this with Necro uh, kind of leads to a cool feedback loop where you get a lot of rage. I think their rage generation is like doubling and going up to like 17 rage per second or something, which is a super high amount. You can keep a really high uptime of Necro Banner, which means like 20% strength for yourself. And then you can also um, reduce Avatar CD a lot. So it's a really good um, kind of engaging single target loop. Um, this adds to some AoE damage and, um, you know, it, you, they can Ravager with that much rage they have and whatever or revenge sorry 
but um, Prot Warrior, it's nothing too special, nothing too out there. It handles physical damage incredibly well. Uh, magic damage, not the best. Uh, it'll get better with the tier set, but obviously, you know, everyone does. Um, I think it's better than Vengeances and Raids. I don't think it's um, like the higher end of A tier, but it does good single target damage. It can do, uh, they all can do decent damage. And um, having Shout will, is never going to be bad. So I think it's it's kind of in the same boat as uh, Bear Druid. It's less survivable. It brings more damage and more utility. So it's it's somewhere in this area here. So we'll put it right there. And we are saving the best for last. Prop Paladin is uh, insane. It is S tier in everything it does. I would put it higher, but that wouldn't really make much sense. It has insane damage, some of the highest in the game. It is essentially unkillable. The tier set is um, insane. It's less good in, in raid. So the tier set... Uh, the two piece is casting shield righteous increases your block chance by four percent for 15 seconds stacking up to three times so it's like a permanent uh 12 block chance which is about i think four and a half percent damage reduction and the four piece uh whenever you block you have a chance a 32 percent chance to cast judgment at your attacker this will proc anything judgment does this will give you uh, holy power this will do damage um it's less good in, in raids because on some fights uh judgment just won't trigger because the boss casts more to deal its damage uh, but with that, anything with an ad base fight, ad base fight, this is insane. But besides that, uh, prop paladin is just crazy. They can bring Ashen, um, which is really it's got nerf, but it's still really good for a tank to be able to bring this, especially with the legendary uh, that you just get for free. You can you get it's fifty percent longer, and you can cancel it to get a shorter cooldown. Um, you can run Kyrian for more interrupts or AOE damage, uh, Night Fae for more of a group buff, and then Necro also gains um, <laughs> a lot with their new uh legendary letting them put out more words of glory uh the words of glory from necro are less good it's probably the worst of the four but um it'll lead to it also gaining stuff so you can be almost any covenant uh they have crazy utility with the three percent damage reduction uh diva aura which is almost needed in raiding they have bop they have sack they have spell bop they have you can world of glory on others um they're unkillable they have decent mobility within within steed just like anything that any tank can do prop pal can do it the best it's crazy right now and i kind of expect it to be nerfed all right so now we're going to move on to the um m plus version and everything um again while every tank is great and you can you can time almost any key with any tank um in m plus there is more of a gradient to how good they are i uh, rate everything's kind of just the same level of good in m plus there's more of a gradient um some things are really good some things are less good and we're going to start with i believe brew so Brewmaster, while well, I gave it an A in Raid, I believe that in M+, it's uh, better because the tier set is just crazy. Um, if you skip the Raid section where I explain the tier set, the tier set for Brewmaster, the two-piece causes Breath of Fire, uh, those who have the Breath of Fire dot on them to deal 4% less damage to you on top of the what it already did. And the four-piece causes Cake Smash to deal 50% increase, uh, extra damage. You heal 66% of the damage you, da you do, and you, you get 66% of the damage you deal as maximum health. And the maximum health can scale super high, um, I run a lot of my key, I run all my keys with a Brewmaster Monk, and he's doing crazy damage. Um, he's out healing the healer on a lot of pulls. Overall, he's about the same as the healer. Um, the Brewmaster set is crazy. Uh, I don't think it's the best um, tank in M plus, but I think it's definitely one of the best, and it's just like insane, right? So you have incredible high damage and healing. Kyrian brings even more of that with extra keg damage of the keg reset, and the extra ox from Lego, which is even more survivable. Uh, it'll be almost unkillable with, with good utility, with, with Clash, which can interrupt stuff, uh, with Ring, with uh, Paralyzing Touch. Uh, you can't go wrong with Monk. Monk is definitely S tier. Alright, so next we're going to do Vengeance. And while I wasn't super high on Vengeance in Raid, I think in M+, Vengeance will be really good. Um, it'll be, you know, one of the faster tanks will be really good at um, kind of MDI style pulls, that kind of stuff. Um, the tier set... Uh, used to be incredibly busted in aoe they've since capped it uh again if you skip the raid section the tier set is as follows so the two per, the two piece has a 10 percent chance to shatter a lesser soul whenever immo aura deals damage which is a lot more in aoe because immo is uncapped so in a big pull you can just have constant soul shards which is why it's really good at those big mdi style pulls and then the four piece causes every soul shard you do to reduce the cd of immo aura or fell dev by one second which again it's just this big feedback loop and then the you'll be playing Kyrian probably, and then the Kyrian Lego, um, the ability itself shatters soul shards, and a Lego causes you to gain um, fury and uh, versatility. Uh, they capped it because of how crazy it was; it's only twenty percent cap, but that's still um, really good. Uh, I think at like a forty second cooldown, 
plus whatever Braun Rangers zip by. So I think uh, Vengeance Demon Hunter, I'm super high on. Uh, they have decent utility with Chains and with uh, Silence. They have an Interrupt. They have uh, a hard CC in Imprison. They have the Fear Sigil. They have good mobility by being able to jump around, and they're super unkillable in meta, plus they also have a cheap death. And they bring Brand for Frost Mages, who will still be good despite the nerfs, I think, as well as Destro Locks, who are going to be crazy, and then just any other uh, magic damage that gets dealt. Uh, you know, Resto Shaman's Kyrian uh, Lego will deal a bunch of damage because of that. So I think, um, I think while I give them a lower mark in Raid, I think they're definitely an 8 tier. They don't bring quite the damage or quite the survivability that Monks uh, bring or that some of the other classes, which we'll see, will bring. Uh, you could definitely argue them at the lower end of S tier, but I'm going to give them A. Alright, so next up is going to be Blood Death Knight. Um, so the tier set, I think, is much better in uh, AoE than it is in Raid. Uh, if you skip the Raid section... Uh, the two-piece causes your heart strike to increase your strength, strength by 1% and duration of dancing room movement by 0.5, persisting for 10 seconds after dancing room movement ends. And the fourth set is whenever you take damage, you have a chance equal to your parry uh, to lash out and heart strike. And then dancing room weapon also summons two rune weapons and it has a three-second ICD, so it doesn't just get crazy and pulls. And the four-piece, I believe, does proc the two-piece. So while in raid, um, the utility of the blood death mine is very good with AMZ. Um, AMZ is much less useful in uh, M+, just because you're moving a lot more and um, you're never really going to hit that cap that um, a DPS DK will bring. And I think I think Frost definitely has a good chance of being a decent in M+. So that loses some value. Um, they're very unkillable, which is always good. Uh, especially, I think they're gaining a lot in high pulls as well with Night Fae. They get a, a bunch of uh, DR and Strength up as well with the Legendary. But their damage is quite lacking, especially their Snap damage. And they will end up losing Threat um, often, I believe. But there's always those people who are really good at Blood Death Knight who are going to be, you know, pushing with Blood Death Knight and they're going to be loving Blood Death Knight. And you might see it in MGI with Dorky. Um, they're all, if Blood Death Knight's ever an option, they're going to be the one doing it. He loves his Blood Death Knight. Um, well, I don't think it's as good as some of the other things. I think it's definitely a solid option. Um, I'm going to give it a B tier ranking just for its lack kind of, of damage. And um, it's less than of utility. Gorfiends is really good and it has a really good slow. But you can find that in other places. Um... And AMZ loses some value, but uh, you could argue it's low A. I'm going to give it B, um, but I still think it'll be a good pick. All right, next up we're going to be doing Bear. Uh, Bear was one of the kings of um, M+, plus in uh, 9.1, and I don't think their positioning will be changing too much. I think um, while they're getting good stuff with their tier set, which I will read for those of you who skipped the raid section, so the two-piece, uh, Bark can cause you to Berserk or go enter Incarn for four seconds whenever you cast it. Uh, and then while you're in Berserk, you radiate 45% of attack power uh, to nearby enemies and heal yourself for 61% of attack power every second. And um, this does scale. This was uh, buffed recently to be hasted, scale with stuff like Rage of the Sleeper as well as the Venthyr ability. So Venthyr uh, Bear gains a, a lot. And then we, and it'll be doing crazy damage at the end. You just pop you pop uh, Ravenous Frenzy, you pop Incarn, you just spam Thrash, you do a bunch of damage to everything around you and you're unkillable. Uh, you already will, were unkillable, so just adding that extra unkillableness, if uh, if you will, um, definitely loses some value just because, you know, there's only so much you can not die from. But they do will we'll be doing a lot of damage every three minutes. Um, the issue, and it could be alleviated by running Rage of the Sleeper, uh, you'll be losing a lot from Ursox or Remembered, but, you know, it's possible that uh, the extra damage and the lower cooldown will help. Um, it's possible that uh, with that, you know, um, you, you run that, you do a little better outside of three minutes. But Bear, as a, as a spec, is very three-minute oriented. And um, the meta looking to be with the, with the affix is like a lot of chain pulls. And Bear tends to do less good at those than some other uh, tanks, just because they won't have as much. Uh, the Bark Skin, every minute, popping Berserk for a few seconds will help uh, on pull with threat and with just kind of stabilizing at the side of a pull because you're only the most dangerous time. Um, but I, um, I think they'll be really good. Uh, they won't be amazing because, again, while they are getting stuff, I think they're getting less um, than some of the other tanks. Their T-Set isn't as impactful, isn't as amazing. But they're definitely um, an A-tier tank in dungeons. Alright, so next we're going to be doing Prot Warrior. And sadly, in M+, Prot Warrior, I think, is, is by far the worst one. I think this is probably, you know, like, you can argue anything's going to be good. You can argue Death Knight could be A-tier. But I think Prot Warrior is by far the, the worst. Um, their tier set doesn't really bring a lot in AoE. Um, their tier set being um, two pieces that every... I believe it's 30 rage you spend yeah every 30 rage you spend you get a stack of seeing red and when you have eight stacks you get outburst which makes your next shield slam or thunderclap be 200 percent more effective than grant ignore pain um so that's 
uh, 200% more damage and added abilities, so more rage, and the slow and thunder toughness is larger, and you can't ignore, and you get to ignore pain, and it happens about every 20 seconds. Um, the issue is that thunderclap won't doesn't do a lot of damage as it is. Uh, Prot warrior kind of been recovering from its insane just uh, 8.3 showing, and it's kind of been, uh, bad to not good in uh, M plus all of this expansion because of that. And I won't say this changing. A lot of the damage comes from revenge and AOE, and the tier set doesn't really buff that. Um, as well, um, they're they're just kind of lower so They're on the lower end of survivability in dungeons. A lot of magic things happen. Shield reflects really good. Um, they're really good in, in theater pain because of how much physical damage happens there, and not so much in other places. And I don't think that'll change. But that's kind of their only niche. Um, they don't have other than that. Their niches are better filled by other tanks, and uh, their damage isn't anything crazy. Their survivability isn't anything crazy. They don't besides um, the health shout. They don't bring anything like super unique to the table. Um, so I'm going to give them a C tier. You could argue they're D. Um, you really could argue they're D, but I don't think any tanks are really D tier. Um, they're all kind of okay. So I think it's C. And we left the best for last again. I'm just going to put this right up here. Again, I think it goes in like an S plus or Paladin tier. They're just crazy. Everything I said in the raid section still applies, but they're even better. So they're, um, I talked about how their tier set isn't super great in single target. Um, or in boss encounters where the boss you're fighting doesn't cast, doesn't like hit you a lot. They do, do more casts. While on M plus, um, everything just kind of hits you with melees. Uh, throughout the dungeon, you're gonna gain a lot of benefit from it. Uh, if you skip the raid section, the two piece, uh, every shield of righteous you cast increases your block chance by four percent for fifteen seconds, stacking it to three times. About a four point five percent damage reduction. More in AOE, I think, because you're gonna end up blocking more. And the the four piece is where it gets nutty. Because you have a 33% chance to cast Judgment at your attacker whenever you block. Uh, and this will trigger off autos. It has an ICD of about 3 seconds, I believe, just because of uh, AoE. It might be 2 seconds. I'm not sure on that one. But this will cause any Judgment effects to trigger. Um, it'll give you the credit for spending it, uh, like, actually using Judgment. So it'll give you Holy Power, which leads to even higher uptime of Shield of the Righteous, which is more damage, which is more block, which is more tier set, which is more Holy Power, which is more damage. And you can see how this kind of just scales out of control. Likewise, Kirin is crazy. Having the ability to just do this huge AoE um, with shields, like giving you uh, like a health absorb and interrupt stuff and do a bunch of damage every like 40 seconds or so is a really good snap threat. It's really good damage, really good survivability. Likewise, their tier set was already really good. Uh, not the tier set, sorry. Their Covenant Legendary was already really good. So by unlocking double legendaries and giving the system kind of just baseline, they, build, they gain a lot from being able to use like other legendaries, their stuff with damage, stuff with survivability. So they gain a lot there. And they also have almost 100% uptime on um, Guardian of Ancient Kings. I believe that's what it's called. They're 20% DR and they're cheat death because of how conduits scale. And uh, if Holy Priest is ever brought, it, they literally just have 100% uptime because of the changes to Symbol of Hope. So they are literally unkillable. They have still have the same crazy utility with the 3% Dio Aura. They have Bop. They have Sack. They have a Stun. They have a like an interrupt and then another interrupt with shields as well as the minute mass aoe interrupt um they can heal other people with word of glory which is super useful if you push higher into higher keys um they're just insane in everything they do and they're by far the best tank in both m plus and raid and they're, they're just crazy so there you have it uh those are my thoughts on both m plus and raid tank balance uh leading into 9.2 um if things change severely with tuning i will do kind of an updated tier video uh, just letting people know my thoughts and how things have changed. Um, comment down below if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Um, let me know your thoughts on how things work here. Let me know uh, how you think we should nerf Paladin <laughs> or buff Prot Warrior, <laughs> I guess, because those are kind of the two um, outliers. And again, you know, this everything is super usable. Everything is, is really close in tank balance. Um, Blizzard has actually done a really good job in 9.1 and moving to 9.2, which is how close tanks are to each other besides like a few instances. Um, and every tank can do every form of content. You can get a CE on any tank. You can push 27s on any tank. You can do whatever you want on any tank. This is just kind of to highlight what I think each tank is better at in each niche and how, um, how each tank kind of can excel in certain areas or not excel in others and which has like less weaknesses overall, which has a more complete package. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be having tier set video, uh, tier list videos for um, both healers, DPS, uh, both healers and range and melee out uh, within the next few weeks. Uh, more guides for 9.2 so uh, if you like the video uh subscribe like it comment down below uh yeah uh thank you for watching